Hey guys, welcome back to another Drift Cars JP video. Today we're getting a few little small jobs tidied up on the Civic. I've been sort of putting little jobs like this off for a while. What I've got ready to go today, I've got to put the water temp gauge in, I've got to do some hard race uh, sway bar bushes. That's for the coolant temp sensor, I've got to cut that in a radiator hose. And also I've got some Tagawa uh, rigid collars. Now, if you don't know what rigid collars are, and if you've seen people talk about them on the internet, what they do is they go inside the, the bolt head on your subframe, which I'm going to show you how to fit them now. And what they do is they stop a lot of slop that, when they were fitted from the factory, the subframes in a lot of cars, there's a, a lot of gap around where the bolts are. And over time, you might get a bit of clicking or something like that in the subframe, or it moves around if you hit a, hit a large bump or something, or a pothole, something like that. And what these do is actually take up that gap in, in between where the the th the thread of the bolt goes in and, and the subframe, which I'll show you that in a second. I'm also going to get the canard fitted up today. We've got some ultra racing uh, lower four point bars. They're going from the rear subframe to the, the front subframe. And we're also going to try and get this ducting done today on the brakes as well. Basically try and get it all finished so that I'm um, at the point of ready to go racing once it all gets going. So we'll show you up under the front here what a, where the collars go to start with. Okay, here are the bolts that you need to remove. So you've got the rear outer, rear inner, and then if we look up here on the suspension arm, this is your upper upper one. So you're only removing ones that are actually bolting into the actual chassis of the car. So we only want to take that one because that one's mounted to the frame. That one's mounted to the frame. That one there's just mounted into the uh, actual subframe itself. So you don't need to undo those ones. So what they do is they come in three different sizes. Now I've got a mark you can probably see on here. So the upper there, which is the thickest one of the lot, which is I think 18 mil. Then the rear inner, which is this one here is the 17.5 mil and then the rear outer which is that one there is a 15 mil so you're, whenever you buy them they'll come in a pack and they're separated like that because they've got slightly different collar sizes so i'll crack them off with a, a breaker bar because my kids are all in bed it's about eight eight oh no it's probably about seven o'clock i think at the moment so any whenever you get a bit of a knocking noise in your suspension or a clicking under braking that's generally what's caused by this. So we'll get this one out. Okay, so we've got that out. Now can you see there's a, obviously quite a bit of gap around where that bolt sits in like that. And that's what we're taking up. We're taking up that slack inside there so that this bolt is actually going to rest on the collar of the bolt rather than just relying on the actual head strength of the bolt which is just basically on this surface here so what it will do is actually flare out and sit inside there so we'll get the uh, collar out for the rear now there's our collar there now some some kits they actually mount on the inside of the frame which is fine it's just a lot more work you've got to drop the whole frame down this one here so you can see that will just tightly go in and then it sits there like that Put the bolt back in and do it up, and that's it. That's um your, your collar kit. So we'll do that one up. So we've got a second bolt out. You see that one? Same thing. It's quite quite loosely fitting. In the hole there, so we get our smallest collar for that one. Okay, so there's our smallest collar. So you, you should know you can't put them in any other hole. They're only going to fit in fit in one particular hole. So you're not going to make the mistake of putting it in the, the wrong spot. So that one's just a bit tight in there. Now 
Now if you've got to tap them in like that, just make sure you use a nice soft soft hammer for it. So it's obviously you might need a little bit of WD in there just to help it. Obviously they're tight to get in because they've made the tolerances very tight for obviously from the work. This is our upper one. You can just sort of you can see up there. Right, yep. That one went a lot easier than the other one. And that's basically it. So once we get that those three done, that's your rigid collar kit done. So you just do the same to the other other three on the other side. And hopefully stiffens up the front end a little bit more. You probably won't it's not anything you're going to do that you're going to notice you're not going to jump and go oh wow feel the front end now it's going to stop mostly getting a whack on a track like if you're on a racetrack and you hit the ripple strips and stuff like that on a track a lot of people see on tv and think oh yeah it's just to look like you just sort of bump and go over them but if you've actually been on a track they actually hit pretty hard on your car so it's enough to sort of can throw out over the course of a weekend or something racing it can actually just throw out your steering geometry so it's a good job to have done and yeah once they're done they're done and that's it sort of thing so we'll get that one tightened up and then we might start to get these ultra racing bars on the front as well well Randy, let's have a look at these ultra racing lower four point bars now these i got off um moonlight racing in australia they were 174 dollars posted um as far as i'm aware that's how they mount. Um, mount off that, that bottom bolt off your suspension here. There, I don't know if it's that way or that way. I assume it's probably that way actually. With the, the larger point at the front. Because um, it says front lower side four piece. So obviously that's just the part number. So, so we bolt on there. Bolt on up underneath there. Which is going to get in the way of this plastic. And um, it just helps tie the whole front suspension together because these parts are separate to each other i know spoon makes like a quite a big um i think it's like a four point as well but it's sort of here and across and everything like that these are a lot cheaper than a spoon one and yeah hopefully they do do some type of job so we'll just uh whip these 17 mils off underneath here and get it mounted up oh that's a 14. this one in the front 70. Oh, God, that's tight. All right. Now, these don't come with any bolts. You just use your existing bolts. So they just fit in through. So they sit inside there. They've got a bit of an elongated hole on them, so they actually line up easier. Instead of having something that's super tight that you can't get in. So, I'll just sit that one in there. The front one, so it's kind of interferes a bit with these plastics at the front here. Not a big deal. But the bar on my thing is quite out of shape, so it's probably more likely the bar than anything. You obviously want to try and get them centered as best as possible. So that's all fitted up there with the ultra racing bar. I just removed this little dampener off the suspension. It doesn't do anything. All this is is just like a weight that they've put on the car which will stop some type of vibration or, or something like that they've discovered from the factory. Because that was actually sitting on there, rubbing on the actual brace. So I'll get the other side on and 
Then we'll start looking at these canards and the uh, brake ducting. So that's them both installed. The Ultra Racing four point uh, braces. So that's what you're going to get in your kit. So if you buy the $165 kit or around $200, I think it is on eBay, that's what you get. They show in the picture. They also show the brace that goes across there as well. It's a bit confusing. You don't actually get that part. So it's only just these these two two braces here. I'm just looking at fitting these canards, but I don't know if it's my bar, but this side here, you can see the gap through there. That's where it's supposed to sit. Doesn't really want to line up. I don't know if my bar's bent, but if I go over to the driver's side, uh, passenger side, sorry, this one fits nice and neat. You can see the, the gap through there is barely, barely a gap at all. So I don't know if I'm going to ditch these or uh, not actually use them because I know they, they'll probably do some type of uh, aero uh, use but not if it's going to have a big gap so so that's where that one sits there go to the other one sit it in the same same spot and then I've got a big gap there still so yeah I don't know if I need to bend the brackets a little bit but I'm not a real big fan of these things anyway I, I don't like for the type of motorsport that I'm going to be doing, I don't think they're going to make any difference at all. They're more of an aesthetic item than uh, anything that's actually going to help with downforce as such. Unless you're doing like 250 k's an hour, they might do something. But I don't think they're going to do much on, on this thing. So we might just bend these brackets and see if we can sort of get it to fit a little bit better. Now that's the best I can get it to sit, which still leaves a gap. So we might leave these off, I think. Like I said, uh, I don't think they're going to do a whole lot. And they're probably just going to have something I'm going to keep gouging my, my leg on whenever I walk past the car. So, yeah, so that's a shame. Um, if I get another bar in the future, maybe they'll fit better on a bar that's not bent. Like you can see, mine doesn't sit in very well in this gap through here. It's sort of in and then it's in tight there sort of thing. So it's had a bit of a nudge at some stage in its life, but... That's not a big issue, so we'll probably just uh, put them on the shelf or, or sell them or do something else with them. So in here you can see I've got the silicon brake uh, piping in there. Uh, it fits in quite well. It's a little bit too small, the actual diameter of the silicon, but I managed to sort of wedge it in there and it's uh, held in there with some tape and cable ties. Um, what I've got to do now, lucky I've put these ultra racing braces on because this is what's going to actually hold the brake ducting down like this away from any other sort of part so if this wasn't here I wouldn't have, have anything to actually uh, mount it onto so I'm just going to make some alloy brackets to go around there and then I'll clamp it onto the, to the line I'm not making them like to go right onto the brakes um, being front wheel drive there's so much in the way I figure as long as I'm going to delete the fog lights I might as well run the air to do something rather than just running into the the back of the plastic here and not sort of doing anything but while I was here I sort of discovered the thermostat housing um, is leaking so I've ordered a new one of them which I've ordered a spoon one and I've also ordered the, the back hose that goes off the back of that too I managed to run all the wiring in here to run the uh, temperature sensor so I won't drain the coolant yet I'll wait till I get the thermostat housing and we'll mount that in there and then um, I've just got to earth one of the wires out and that's done so I've got that I've got the exhaust sensor all hooked up as well and I'll probably change your oil on it so I might do a quick video on how to change your oil on it next week so that'll be it for today's video so I just want to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel so far it's good it encourages me to do a lot more work to the car and also with the Sierra as well which um, I've got a bunch of videos ready to go for it I'm just waiting on a few parts to turn up and then we can go sort of get cracking on that one and I'm just going to lift the suspension a little bit on the uh, FN2. It's just eating away a bit of the guard underneath. And I, I don't want it sort of hitting. It's sort of, it's hit the subframe a few times. So I don't want it sort of bashing the bottom of the uh, car apart on the thing too. So anyway, just say thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, uh, like, smash the like button if you're interested with in what I'm doing. And that sort of encourages me to do more stuff as well. No worries, thanks for watching. Bye.